Hi there, my name is Jen and thanks so much for tuning in to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel today. Uh, today I had the pleasure of working with the new Sizzix Tim Holtz die set called Twig and Stump. It is an absolutely amazing, super fun die set. Um, so I wanted to go over some of the pieces. This is a set with 26 dies in it. Uh, so there are plenty of dies to create all sorts of scenes. And I went ahead and I grabbed this other set that I have, which is called Christmas Cutouts. This is how the Sizzix Tim Holtz um, die sets come in this little plastic pouch, which is super convenient. And I wanted to point out that if you ever lose the insert that kind of guides you on how to put these pieces together, there is a number up in the right hand corner of that um, insert and that matches up with what is on the die. So if you ever lose that packaging, you can go ahead and search for Sizzix and then that number and it'll pull up um, the set. And so just a few of the dies that you get are a twig which is the name of that snowman which is right and left facing and then you get for the stump you get three dies um, and the differences in these are the way the eyes are facing forward up or to the side and each of the snowman comes with one outline die um, so there's one for twig and one for stump and what that does is uh, it cuts out a solid piece that you put behind the snowman for their eyes and the buttons and then I created a little cheat sheet uh, for putting the scars together. Um, one of the things about this set um, and probably other Sizzix sets as well is that like all of the pieces for each um, item is all in one die. So for the scarf, all of the pieces of the scarf cut out at once. Um, that's the same for the hats as well. So I'm just putting, um, giving you a sample of how these go together. So you've got a solid piece and kind of a decorative piece for the scarf. And that is the scarf that goes on twig. And so it's really easy to put together. Um, to make it even easier, you can either use um, adhesive cardstock or um, adhesive sheets. So um, this happens to be adhesive cardstock, but especially for the smaller pieces, um, it's really helpful to have some kind of adhesive behind there um, other than glue so you're not gluing all the pieces. I, however, didn't mind using the glue and so um, I would say if you're putting together anything like this, one of the most helpful things you can have is these tweezers. Um, I'll go ahead and leave a link below for the tweezers uh, that Scrapbook Pal carries. Uh, it is super helpful for holding smaller items, for adding the glue, for putting things in place. It's just one of those kind of like everyday card making tools that is super helpful. And here are all of the kind of twigs for the arms for the snowman. Uh, there is a longer set and a shorter set and they all cut out at once. So I believe there are like eight pieces that cut out at once, which makes it super helpful uh, that you're not doing those pieces individually. Um, and for all of the dies that I used, I went ahead and I took some frayed burlap distress ink and a finger dauber and went around the edges. And these are the pieces that I'm actually using for my card today. And I've gone ahead and left the arms off for now because I wasn't sure where they were going to be placed on the card. So I'm going to go ahead and do that last. Here are the papers I used, which are some older Tim Holtz um, papers that coordinate with, at the time, the colors that they had. And I'm going to be creating a shaker card today. So I am using a paper cut to five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And I've got uh, my shaker piece um, and two shaker windows. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use those. And this is my shaker mix, which is basically just a bunch of different um, embellishment mixes from my stash. And then I added a bunch of distress glitter in the candy rock. Uh, and it gets a really pretty kind of snow globe effect when it is um, in there with the shaker mix. So I've cut out my circles using dies from my stash and I'm gonna go ahead and create the window. So I've added some adhesive around that edge of that circle and then I'm just using a piece of plastic packaging to go ahead and use for my shaker window. And then once I have that, I'm going to take some uh, foam strips and put those around the card. Uh, and the easiest way to place the foam strips 
uh, in a circle is to go ahead and remove the backing paper. Uh, it is easier to bend around in a circle when that backing paper is already removed. Um, and once I have that done, I'm taking my anti-static bag uh, just to make sure that the uh, pieces don't stick to the sides of that tape. And that will help kind of remove a little bit of that stickiness. And then I'm gonna dump all of the goodness of that shaker mix into the kind of pocket for the window. And then the big blue circle is what's gonna be the background. And so I'll go ahead and grab that and place that to kind of seal in um, all of that mix. And I'm gonna place that as close as I can to around the circle. And then I wanna make sure that is really tight just because there's lots of tiny little pieces of glitter. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run my hands around that to make sure it's sealed. So along the back, I'll go ahead and run my hands and then I'm gonna go over on the top of that and do the same um, again, just to make sure that none of those little pieces fall out. And then I'm gonna test that out and kind of shake things around and make sure that nothing is coming out of there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the rest of the card. So the frame piece that is out of that same paper, I'm gonna go ahead and take my white card base or my card panel um, and then adhere that frame and then fit that circle right in the middle. And I use both um, liquid adhesive and double-sided adhesive just to make sure that is very secure. Um, and so the second piece um, of the circle, which is kind of also a frame for the shaker. I'm gonna use that. I wanted some of the elements of the card um, beneath it and some in front, which is why I used a double circle instead of just the one um, shaker circle that frames out the um, shaker piece. And then I did a dry run with all of my pieces to figure out what kind of layout I wanted for them. And at that point I could determine how I wanted the arms of the snowman to be. So for the ones, two little stumpies on the bottom, um, they're gonna be holding up the sign. So their arms are gonna be up in the air. And then it didn't really matter on the two larger snowmen where they were, but I found it easiest to go ahead and secure the arms to the back um, and secure that with a piece of tape rather than using a glue adhesive or a double-sided tape adhesive. Um, I just felt it was a little bit more secure. And then once I have all of the arms on, I'm gonna go ahead and take that pattern paper that is that top circle piece and lay that out over my snowmen. So the bottom of the snowmen are gonna be under that circle frame and then the hats and the arms are going to be kind of pushed out so that they're on top of it. Um, so there is going to be a little bit of each snowman sticking out um, beneath that circle and I'm going to go ahead and cut those pieces off once I have uh, secured the snowmen. So here I'm going to pop them out so that their hats are not covered up by that circle. And I'll add a little dot of glue behind each of their hats to secure them. Uh, but I'm not gonna go ahead and glue down their arms. I think they're fine um, as they are. And then I'll add a little bit of glue and I'm just adding the glue to the center of the tree. I did not want it to squeeze out onto that piece of plastic because sometimes it can be pretty difficult to disguise that um, glue when it um, seeps out underneath things. Even though it is clear, um, I didn't want that seeping out. Um, and here I'm gonna go ahead and just cut those extra pieces hanging over. Um, and I'm turning my scissors at an angle so I'm not actually cutting the circle piece of paper but rather the um, overhang of the snowman. And then I'm gonna take these scrapbook adhesive small foam dots. I'm gonna add them all around the circle and to the back of the snowman as well so that this piece is popped up a little bit away from the um, actual shaker piece. And I'm using uh, a bunch of these instead of one single piece of foam, mainly because these cover the area that I want to cover and I didn't have a thick enough one to go around that circle um, to cover most of the area and so that's why I opted to go with the foam dots. Um, and then I'm going to assemble the st stumpies <laughs> I'm gonna call them. Uh, so I went ahead and glued them together and then also added a piece of tape to the back to hold them together. And then to adhere them to that um, a shaker window, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of a liquid adhesive. Um, and after I adhere 
each piece, I go ahead and set a stamp block on them uh, to make sure that that dries completely. Um, I don't show that through a lot of the video, but um, that is the way that I get them to uh, make sure that there is that adherence to whatever it is being stuck to. And then I'm going to add a few snowflakes using the three snowflake dies that came in this set. Um, and then to complete the card, I will use a finger dauber along with some distress ink in black soot. And I'm just gonna take that black soot and go around the edges of the cards, uh, making sure to add a little bit more ink on all of those corners. I think it just frames the card out really nicely and brings everything together. Um, and that's gonna do it for this card. This is definitely um, a card that you would spend a little bit more time on. It is not a five minute card, uh, but I can tell you it was definitely fun putting this together. Definitely worth it uh, and worth the time that I spent. And I know it's going to make somebody very happy. Um, so I hope you liked this card as much as I liked making it. And if you did like this video or find it informative, I would love it if you would give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel, we would love to have you. The design team, mem team members um, always have lots of awesome inspiration. Um, and lastly, I just want to say a thanks so much for spending some time with me today. And I hope to see you next time.